Shalom, shalom, Israel. First of all, I have to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, and I do so by Shema Mashiach Yahushua. Second of all, I have to give double honor and glory to the elders who taught us this truth and paved way for us to come to grow in this truth. But today, I'll be coming back with a quick video on Are We in a New Covenant? And the short answer is no. But, like, what exactly is promised in the New Covenant? Now, uh, to keep this video short, uh, I'm, only, I'm only like a link. Uh, I'm not going to go into it, but like, uh, I'm going to uh, just tell you. Basically, the New Covenant was prophesied about in like, um, like the things that would be in the New Covenant were prophesied by Jeremiah 30. But I'm going to go to the New Testament because um, that's what a lot of people, Christians, run to saying after Christ died, that's when the New Covenant came. But this is what the Bible says about the New Covenant after the New Testament. Well, it really started at Hebrews 8 and 4. But again, I suggest brethren read all the, this whole chapter. But for the context, uh, let's try to start at eight, uh, verse 4. Hebrews 8 and 4. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that they, they are priests of, that offer and gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example of sh a sh and shadow of heavenly things to come. Come on, basically talking about how if Yahweh was was of earth and um since he's from the tribe of judah he would not be a levitical priest and how the uh, levitical priests are like serving up like doing things like uh like they're uh the way that they're uh, ministering is like um what it's like basically repenting uh, representing what is to come Who serve unto verse five? Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses had, was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle? For she said, "He that thou make all things according to the pattern showed thee the amount." Come, me also like, like when I said like of things to come, also um, also of heavenly things, because like somehow some way there's like a heavenly priesthood. Like priesthood in the heavens. Mm. Verse six. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry. It's talking about Yahusha. But how much he also is a mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Cause kind of like, I believe Exodus twenty five is um when the uh, Moses spring sprinkled the blood upon the Israelites to enter them into the so-called Old Covenant. Well, yeah, the Old Covenant. And so this is talking about the New Covenant that's about to happen. But let's read it. some of the things that's in the New Covenant. Um, verse 7, For if that first covenant had been faultless then should no place have been sought for the second verse eight for finding fault with them he said behold the days shall come said of course this is a referring back to jeremiah 30 said the lord when i will make a new covenant with the house of israel that's a northern kingdom and with the house of judah southern kingdom not according to the covenant i made with their fathers in the day when i took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, said the Lord. Kind of so like um, this new covenant. This new covenant is going to be like a little bit different from the old covenant that the Lord made with us in like in in Exodus twenty five, I believe. Verse ten. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after the. With the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind. Most people, like, uh, most people can't even <laughs> tell you the Ten Commandments. So the laws is not in their mind. And write them in their hearts. Like, people don't have the law in their hearts. And yeah, reading on it, I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Obviously referring to the, uh, the nation of Israel. Like it says in the ho house of Israel, like, upper in this uh, verse itself. Verse 10. But verse eleven, and they shall not teach, they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, "Know the Lord." Come, people won't be teaching. People won't be teaching the Lord, reading on for all shall know me from the great least to the greatest. Come, so the Israel, the Israelites, 
According to the new covenant, the Israelites will not be teaching each other. For everybody will know the Lord from the greatest to the smallest, but like little kids are literally brought up and being taught about the Lord. They just don't come out the womb of knowing the greatness of the Lord. So that's, again, that's another cut that we're in the new covenant. Verse 12, for I will be merciful unto their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Okay, so most of us going to have grace and mercy upon the remnant, the elect, and ultimately all Israel, because all Israel will be saved, which I guess I could get that verse after this. But verse 13 is what nails it all. And that he said a new covenant, he had made the first old. Now that was decayed and waxed old is ready to vanish away. And this is after like, uh, yeah, I wish I died. So, so like, like right after you outside died, it's talking about this, uh, the oak, um, so talking about like, uh, like, like this is like years after you he was just written years after you was shot, died, and it's still talking about how the old covenant is old and ready to vanish away, but it didn't say it vanished away, it didn't say we're in a new covenant because we're not, because we're still. We're not fully in the old covenant, but like it's decaying and it's uh, waxing away. And for more understanding, I I hope uh, I suggest brethren, brethren or for brother to go to WFI or watch a Sakara video, something like that, regarding this topic. But like I said. I guess Romans eleven twenty six. Romans eleven twenty six. And so all Israel shall be saved, that is written. They shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So like basically this is prophesying of Yahusha. Now, um, of course, I suggest brethren read the whole chapter to get the context, to get the full context. But like, ultimately, at the end, so it says, so all Israel shall be saved. So of course, the one third will um bring back the two third that died, and also the, just the unbelieving Jews in the second wilderness, and just those who died, like who just died. But anyways, like uh, that goes into like another debate, another topic, and it's so lucky for being uh, inconsistent while talking. I'm just just kind of sleepy. But anyways, I hope somebody got edified, and I pray y'all pray for me, I pray for y'all, I pray y'all may pray for each other. But I think you all honor and glory to Yahweh, and I do so by Shem Shalom.